two or at most three electric hours to finish chapter two. So today we go to uh, different sections. I think this section is uh, our textbook, section 2.6. And right now we're talking about is the damp systems. So from today we will uh, shift our focus with assistance with damping. Okay, so this is our focus here. Because we have these additions and KCM is the degree of freedom. So for here, the uh, equation of motion, we can write that up as like this. Okay. And the damping components here are going to dissipate the energy. And we can try to look at this issue is this. The total energy is going to decrease over time. And for this simple example, we can look at it um, using this one again, uh, the kinetic energy per plus uh, the potential energy. So let me call this as E. Okay. And so we look at the DE, DT, see what happens. So again, this one is 1 mx dot squared plus 1 half kx squared. And this one can be uh, written by mx double dot plus uh, kx. Okay, multiply with this one. And from here, because using the equation of motion, we know these terms uh, equal to minus cx dot. Okay, so that is minus cx dot squared. So for these terms, if we're looking into the energy, and so that is a DE over DT. So that's saying the change of the energy over time is negative, okay? And this is C is constant, and X dot square is always positive. Unless it's zero, then it's going to zero. So that is less equal to zero. Until everything stops, then it will be equal to zero, okay? So eventually, the system vibration is going to uh, stop stop at the equilibrium. So that is expectations. And the question is how fast this is going to stop and that's a more quantitative um, questions then we can answer this question later on. Okay. So that is a concept and we in this way we know that due to damping the system vibration is going to damp out and uh, in this way we're going to um, Based upon our equation of motion here, and we're going to do some more quantitative uh, analysis. And here, um, we're going to introduce the standard uh, form for describing the systems. So either from here, we are given the single uh, degree of freedom KCM, or in all, by all means, you need to find the equivalent description, which means equivalent K, equivalent C, equivalent <coughs> mass. Okay. By all means, you need to convert into such a standard template. So once we have this form, then usually you, you can divide um, the the scale or the terms by m. Okay. And this form is in particular uh, is we like to write it up into this form. So from here, compare term by term. Basically, these terms equal to this. Again, here we introduce is a template. Okay, so we simply take up these um, standards and. These terms equal to this we have seen, so that means omega n equal to k over n. We've seen this one in the previous sections for undamped systems. So this is new to us, so this one that means q zeta omega n from this comparison is c over n. Okay, so here we have two terms. Uh, one, c we call the damping constant. 
And zeta is, by definition, we give the name is for the damping coefficients. Okay. So from this, uh, the given information, we are given the values for k, c, and m. So most of the time, for the first step, at the very beginning, at the very first step of solving the problem in damping, um, the damping system is to know what is the number for zeta. Okay. So from here, you compare this one basically damping coefficient can be equal to simply c over n divided by q omega n. Okay. And that's it. So again, uh, the quickest way to do it, you simply formulate those, uh, the template, standard template, and then you compare term by term of each and the coefficient of the each term, and you will get this one, okay? So keep those things in mind, then we're going to discuss the three possibilities. And right now, again, we are given those um, systems, equations, and usually we are given the initial conditions, okay? So we, sometimes we are given, say, arbitrary numbers, so the follow-up, once we know about the system, the follow-up step is we want to solve for the system, right? So the next step is to solve xt. Okay. To solve for xt, you look at this one. Right now, if you look at this as the differential equations with the initial conditions here, then basically it's back to our review of the differential equations. So. To answer the question is how, what is xt, basically mathematically we solve for this dbq. Okay, so that's back to our previous review. So our previous review, based upon the information here, let me do this one, do this simultaneously, and for comparison for first time and for only this time, okay? And later on, we're going to pick up either way. So we have this description of the system like this, or equivalently, we have we can have the system description like this. Basically, the description of the two are identical, but again, for the first time for the learning, I do both, and you see the you for comparison. So now we're going to go for the solution process for this. So now the first step we know from um, the solving differential equation, the first one we formulate the, the, the characteristic equations. So here we assume the this one is A times exponents PT. Okay, P is certain parameters. Again, I used the parameters we used a couple weeks ago. So the characteristic equations is NP squared plus CP plus K equal to zero, right? Okay, the same thing for this system is um, um, p squared plus 2 theta omega nt plus omega n squared equal to 0. So that will cover its equations. So the, the roots of this um, equation is called the catalyst root. So in this way, the p will be equal to 2m and minus c plus equal to 6 squared minus 4mk, right? And for this case, the root will be equal to uh, minus theta omega n plus minus um, omega n times 1 minus theta squared. Okay, so basically, again, in particular for this form, if you plug in the um, the um, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, x equal to minus uh, 2a minus b plus minus c, uh, b squared minus 4ac. You simply plug in into this template, and you can get this form pretty easily, right? Okay. Um, you take note and also listen, okay. 
And so, again, to this point, and if you remember when we do the review of the differential equations, and if you still remember that kind of things, and the next step is likely depends on what's going on within the square root, we will have a different situations to discuss individually, right? So that means the case one depends on the value, that means C minus 4MK um, is positive, okay? So case one here is one minus zeta square is positive. Um, my, my fault, I made a mistake here, this should be zeta square minus one. Sorry, please change it. Okay. And so for case one, if we have such a situation, then uh, if you remember what is this, we call this is overdamp system, right? So basic case one is for what we call the overdamp. Right, for overdamp systems, and for example, say, um, for illustrations, for example, say let me say this number equal to I just give any numbers. Okay, so for this case, and we know the uh, the solutions. If you remember, and so basically we have uh, the solution P will be equal to P one or P two, and both are real. The real numbers. Right, the same thing here, so let me put everything together. So in this way, the solutions will be equal to A1 exponent P1 P plus A2 exponent P2 P. So this is exponent, these are exponent functions, and there's no oscillation, okay? And case two, if we have uh, the numbers within the square root equal to zero. So here the same case two. The, the numbers within the square root equal to zero. So for case two, that is we define as called the quickly. That systems. So quickly damp systems, basically from this one, you can see the damping ratio equal to one. That is the first note you have to keep in mind. Okay, so for damping ratio equal to one, that is by definition, uh, it's called the quickly damp system. And so from here, we can uh, define, we call the critical damping constant. So under these situations, you can see, from here you can see we can do a little bit of calculations from here. C will be equal to 4MK square root, right? So in particular, uh, here the people put it critical. CCR, that means we define as the critical damping constant. So if people ask, uh, ask you to calculate what is the critical damping constant, you simply put into here, do these calculations. Okay. And if you like, you can combine with, in this way, uh, you can compare and uh, express this term in terms of C. Okay, basically here, if you like to play around, there's a couple uh, various expressions for critical damping constant, and but here is not that important because for us, in particular, in particular for me, I kind of the focus on is the numbers, number crunchings. Okay, so really we have something as long as you know how to do the numbers, and then not too good. Okay, so here have a few other different expressions provided by our textbook and uh, refer to the textbook. I didn't write here because I don't think that is important. I feel sometimes it is authors show off, try to confuse um, 
the beginners. Okay, so as long as we pick one, we know how to do it. Then the remaining, say, we go to the reference book. We always have something to go. Okay, so that is this case. So now for this case, then uh, the solution is basically the root is p equal to p1, p1. So that is the p root. <coughs> Okay, so for the repeated roots, basically we have a solution xt. Have this form is a1 plus a to t times repeated. Okay, so here p1 equal to p2. So again, that is a form a1 plus a2 times t. Okay, don't forget this term here. Basically, that is the multiplication of uh, exponent function, expo exponential function with the linear function. Okay. So again, those one are based upon our review from the different EQ. I simply put here. Um, for the calculation of the case one, case two, basically there's a no oscillations because you can see from either uh, based upon this solutions for overdamp system that is in the combination of the exponential functions. Exponential function basically is one way decaying or exploring no oscillations. The same thing here for the quickly damp systems, the solution basically is a combination of a linear function which is monotonically increase or decreasing, there's an exponential function. Basically, here, again, there's no oscillation in here. We simply look at the mass, and we guarantee there's no oscillations. So, the case one, case two, for system with overdamped or quickly damped, you shouldn't expect any the oscillations. Okay, so, for example, uh, if you go to bar, the, uh, I mean the drink, okay, and some of the bars in the design have the door you push through and then kind of right back and forth and if unluckily uh, someone could hit nose <laughs> if you fall off. Okay, those kind of the doors, the hinge, um, the damping on the hinge can be actually can be adjusted uh, for certain expensive hinge. So for kind of these flip back back and forth, basically they have the hinge, have the damping that is so small, so basically they have oscillations. And if you are the owner, you can adjust the damping such that without any oscillation. So that means, try to adjust it according to the calculation, that means no damping, and no oscillation like the cases. Okay. Now, uh, the, the later we will have uh, the examples to demonstrate the cases. The calculation, calculation of the first two cases are easy. Okay, very, very straightforward and not much to say. And the most important thing we want to run is in the case three. That means we expecting oscillations. So oscillation, that means the case three is the um, OMK less than zero. Okay, so for this case, uh, that is the case two and case three is uh, damping minus one less than zero, okay? So for this case, we call the uh, the underdamp system for case three. Okay, so for case three, that is become negative, then we have something to show here. So we can take a break. Okay. Yeah.